Let's go. I don't know what you're going through, but we stopped by to tell you that what's in front of you is bigger than what's behind you. Your destiny, your promise, your future. You might as well shout before you get it, because God sent me here to tell you that what he has for you is going to be big. That it's my season. That it's my season. You ought to declare that over your own life. Say, I believe. I believe. That it's my time. That it's my time. It's my time. It's my time. And I can feel it. And I can feel it. <laughs> Say, breakthroughs in the room. Breakthroughs in the room. It's yours if you want it. Anticipating. God's getting ready to move. God's getting ready to move. Listen, you ought to declare this over your own life. Say it. God, He's working a miracle just for me. And it's gonna be. Hey, listen, I don't know about you. Good morning. Today is January 31st, 2021. We're on lesson nine today. The subject of the lesson today is prophesying daughters. Prophesying daughters. Our lesson scripture uh, is quite a few. Uh, it's Luke. We're going to be in Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38. We're going to jump to Acts chapter 1, verses, 1, verses 12 through 14. Acts chapter 2, verses 16 through 21. Acts chapter 21, verse 89. The focus scriptures are the same, excluding Acts chapter 1, 12 through 14. So prophesying daughters, prophesying daughters. First, uh, we have Luke, and then we have a bunch. Um, we have some chapters in Acts. So prophesying daughters, prophesying daughters. Uh, it, it starts in Luke when it talks about Anna. Uh, Anna, uh, when it, it speaks of her prophecy. Her, her prophecy uh, when she was in the temple, uh, she prophesied when she saw Jesus today on at the time that he was going in to be circumcised. Uh, and prof she prophesied about him being the Messiah. She spoke that there of Jesus being the Messiah. Uh, we move down into in the books of Acts. Uh, it talks about Joel and her prophecy, and she prophesies about the day of Pentecost. Uh, and so it, we, we talk. It, it talks about these women, and when we get down into Acts, it, it talks about the daughters um, of the house of Philip, um, about those of uh, th those prophetic women. Um, but understand this, we're talking about women prophesizing. We're talking about women in a role that is respected. Um, that's hard today. That's hard for people to accept today. Women in power, women in ministry, women pastoring. That's hard for people to accept. Not only for men to accept, that's hard for some women to accept. Women in leadership roles, women in ministry, women in pastoral roles, women in high political offices. Even women have a hard time accepting that. Today, 2021, January 31st, 2021, today, that's hard for people to accept. Now, let's backtrack ourselves all the way to the time that these books were being written. Oh, man. Can you imagine what could what what was being said to them for saying these things? It's the same people who believe that God can call them. They think that God can call nobody else. It's sad to think that God only calls men. It's sad to think that God only calls men to help people. What did I say? What I mean by when I say help people, women in ministry, they help people. Women in leadership roles, they help people. Women in prophetic roles, they help people. But there are some out there that think that women can't do this, that women shouldn't be doing this. But we're talking about the prophetic daughters in this day, and we're talking about the, the, the chains that have been put on women, the discrimination against women. The, the sad truth about it is. When it's all said and done, most people, sad to say, have problems with change. 
when you take a shift from what is normal, that there's a problem with that. Because you grew up your whole life in some instances seeing a man preach, a man as a superintendent of, of Sunday school, men in all the roles of this and that, of, of high standard. Even when you get into the world, you see men that's presidents of companies, men in, in leadership roles, even in education, men in, um, men in high political office. But when women, when women begin to break through, and they began to take on those executive roles, when they began to step into the pulpit, when they began to um, get higher education, when they began to become principals and superintendents of schools and high educational offices, the, 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 mm, the discrimination that they face, even so much to the point that a president had to pass an equal pay an equal pay act because women weren't being paid the same amount for the same jobs as men. See, the prophetic daughters, God calls who he wants to call. God calls who he wants to call. See, these prophetic, the, the daughters that we're talking about, the women that we're talking about in this lesson, yes, God called them. God gave them the gift to prophesize. God didn't just give gifts to certain people. God just didn't give gifts to certain people or God just doesn't give gifts to a certain color of people. That discrimination there exists. When you think a certain person just because of the color of their skin can only do certain things. You think that a woman just because of her gender, she can only do certain things. Right now, we have a woman as, as, that has been elected to the second highest office in our country. And, 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 and she, she has a double discrimination. She's a minority. And she's a woman. She's a minority and she's a woman. So the discrimination she's faced comes from both sides. And it's sad that some people didn't vote for her, not even because she was a minority, but because she was a woman. It said that women are too temperamental. They, they, they get in there, they get into an office or they get into a position and they have to assert themselves and they monopolize themselves. But, but we shouldn't feel that way. We shouldn't do that. We're getting a little rain right now, so I'm going to turn the camera on. Okay, we're back. So we're continuing to talk about uh, prophesying women and, and the discrimination that women face and just uh, the lack of respect for women in um in uh, areas of power. So I left off talking about our Vice President uh, Kamala Harris um, and the discrimination that she's facing just because of uh, the double discrimination that she's a woman and she's a, a person of color and, and, and the discrimination just because she's a woman mainly that um, women and men um, refuse to respect that and refuse to accept a woman in power. Um, so these back to um, back into the, in, into the biblical sense, um, the prophesying daughters, and, and, you know, and at that time, you know, you, you had different cultures, and even now you have certain cultures that don't allow women to do anything. Um, here in America, we, we're getting a little, we're getting a little better. Uh, we're not, we're getting better. Okay, um, we, women women have the opportunity to move up, but there's still there's still this this, this this class on them, sir. But we're referring back. I know I'm going on back and forth. Um, the, the the Israelites, the Jewish people, the people of this time who who the women were prophesying. Okay, and, and and when it began to get accepted in certain cultures, that wasn't accepted. So when you when you're involved and when you're around certain cultures. In order to fit in, you dull down what you're doing. So, 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 some of the women were silenced because of the other cultures that were around them. So, and even in today, and I want, I want to put this out there to women, just to, and men that are accepted, especially in the church. Now, now I'm speaking toward at the church. When you, if you have a woman in a leadership role, in a ministerial role, in ministry, in pastoral role, some some churches out there won't involve themselves or won't do other things with other churches because they're afraid of what they may say of that woman in power. They are they won't get around certain people or they're kind of scared to admit where they go to church at because a woman is in the leadership role there. And. Like I said, God calls who he wants to call. 
Yes. Yes, yes, God called the man to be the leader of the family. Yes, God called men to lead. But women are women are men's helpmates. They help us. We help them too. Men, we help them too. I know this is a very sensitive subject to a lot of people, even in the church. Because there are some churches out there who don't allow women to preach from the pulpit. They may allow a woman to preach, but she has to preach from the floor. She's not allowed in the pulpit. There are some churches out there that don't even allow a woman to preach. They don't even allow a woman to spread the gospel. There are areas of this world right now where if a woman speaks of God or speaks, speaks of God, she's beheaded. Well, people, even if they speak of God, are beheaded. Don't be ashamed of the calling that God puts on your life and, other, and those around you. Don't be ashamed of the calling that God has put on somebody else's life that is influencing you. See, because some people, they'll get help from a female. And because this help is so great, others may not believe that it, this advice or this help or this wisdom came from a woman. So they're ashamed to speak of it. That is a shame. Like I said, I know I've said it a lot this lesson. God calls who he wants to call. Get yourself right with God before you start talking about somebody else. Before you start talking about the prophesying daughters, the strong women of this world, the strong women of God, get yourself together. Have a blessed day.